for the money lead. How big of a deal is Grand Theft Auto? Opening day sales for the fifth installment of the video game surpassed, wait for it, $800 million. That numbers on its opening night worldwide sales top $800 million. That's one night, easily blowing away all expectations and is now on its way to taking over the world's highest grossing entertainment vehicle ever. Bigger. It's a video game that is shattering sales records. That is to say the least. There's a good chance the teenage gamers in your house may be, well, playing it as we speak. Have you ever logged into GTA Online when a new DLC release dropped, checked out the prices of some of the items and wondered to yourself, how much time do I have to put into this game to buy that new car, that new apartment, or that new business? Well, if you've ever looked into the prices that Rockstar Games sets for their in-game items and wondered, those prices are way too expensive for the rates of money you can make in GTA Online, well you're not the only one. Back in the early days of GTA Online, most things were reasonably priced. The most extensive property at the time was a mere $400,000, which would probably take you less than a few hours to get together and buy. But back in 2013, Rockstar Games had no idea how profitable shark cards would turn out to be in the later years of GTA Online. Now, Grand Theft Auto has always been a game that was focused on telling a great story through one or more playable characters that often took you to different cities across America and even different countries. Rockstar Games has always been talented in having their players experience immersive cities with life that responds and makes you feel like you are an actual part of the ecosystem you are playing in. Grand Theft Auto was never a game that was made to focus on online multiplayer and have players flying around in jetpacks, destroying each other's flying bikes or cars or, or whatever else you can fly in GTA Online nowadays. However, GTA 5 Online has definitely opened the eyes of Rockstar Games and Take-Two Interactive in terms of the money that was hidden in implementing microtransactions into a battle royale free roam game and are definitely going to continue to milk the cash cow that GTA Online has become until its very last drop and this may just very well destroy the future of Grand Theft Auto games. GTA 5 may very well be the last Grand Theft Auto game to be story focused first, online second. GTA Online wasn't always microtransaction oriented and in fact, in its early days, Rockstar Games had actually made the game in a way where players were benefited for working hard and grinding for their money and ranks. During the first generation of GTA 5 Online, back on the Xbox 360 and PS3, most DLC drops were focused on helping the player make money with new purchasables that were very reasonably priced. We got things like the High Life update, bringing us some new cars that were decently priced. Back then, the only luxury that took a bit of time to save up for was that Zentorno. Oh yes guys, if you had a Zentorno in 2014, you were definitely in the upper class of GTA Online players. Coming to GTA Online in May of 2014, the Zentorno was made available for 725,000 GTA dollars which when equating that to real life money through shark cards only costs about 12 US dollars. Now, that was a bit much back in 2014, however it was reasonable considering it was the fastest car in the game at the time and the best looking as well in my opinion. However, once we saw GTA 5 come out for the PS4 and Xbox One, this is when things began to go downhill for GTA Online. Starting off 2015, we got our heists update which was a decent way to make money at the time, netting you a bit over 250k per player depending on the difficulty and the amount of players in the heist. However, heists require setups which require time and decent players to work with. And we all know GTA Online is known for having decent players to work with. 
However, the first DLC update after the heist update in 2015 is where things began to get ugly. The Ill-Gotten Gains Part 1 DLC comes out June of 2015 and along with it, Rockstar gives us a gold-plated airplane for a mere 10 million GTA dollars. Let's do another conversion real quick. 8 million GTA dollars, which is the most expensive shark card available for purchase, comes out to $100. So that would make this gold-plated ultimate flex plane worth $125. $125 for a plane that can't even defend itself and main purpose is for 12 year olds to show everybody in the lobby that they have access to their dad's credit card. Now with the amount of players in GTA Online player base that do fit the category of 12 year olds with access to credit cards and Rockstar Games being well aware of that, you can definitely guess what happened next. This is when Rockstar Games began to see the amount of money they were able to make by selling overpriced vehicles and other in-game assets and then making those assets easily purchasable by means of shark cards. Not much later, we saw yachts be introduced into GTA Online in December of 2015 as part of the Executives and Other Criminals DLC. These started off at 6 million GTA dollars for the smallest yacht and could go up to 10 million and even over that with upgrades. Now, over the years since these updates, Rockstar Games has given us some new DLCs to help players build up money. However, most of these DLCs require a big amount of money to invest just to get started up in, making your return on investment take a good amount of time before you start to actually profit off the money you put into the update. Most players like to be able to access DLCs on day one as well, and this is where Rockstar gets you. When that new casino DLC dropped and you wanted that penthouse suite but barely had 500k on you, that shark card just looked too good not to get, and boom. Rockstar has just made enough money off of one DLC drop through shark cards to delay GTA 6 another 6 months. I think you guys see where I'm getting with this now. Microtransactions have definitely influenced both Rockstar Games and their parent company Take-Two Interactive and will definitely shape the way GTA 6 is developed as well as when it is released. As of now, we don't have an actual news regarding GTA 6, but with the departure of some big names from Rockstar Games such as Dan Hauser leaving this year and Leslie Benzies leaving a few years ago, from the outside looking in, Rockstar Games is beginning to fall apart. As someone who has been playing GTA for over 15 years, I think it's sad to see what is becoming of what was once one of the greatest franchises in gaming history, and let's just pray that the greed of Rockstar Games does not destroy the greatness that GTA 6 and next-gen consoles could offer us.